All right, we are going to solve this trigonometric equation, tangent x equals the sine of x. Uh, well, we have two different trig functions. So again, our first job is to get a single trig function, if at all possible. Um, so one thing I might try is, well, I know tangent is the sine x divided by cosine x. That gives me a little closer, because at least they're all written in terms of sine and cosine. Um, and then what I might try is maybe um, maybe I'll multiply by cosine x so that I'm not dealing with a fraction. So now I have that sine x equals sine x cosine x. Well, I still have mixed things. So let's at least get all the sines on one side and the cosines on the other. Um, so now if I divide by sine x, since it was multiplied, and if I divide by sine x over here, hey, lucky day. That's 1. Sine divided by sine is 1. So I'm down to cosine x equals 1. And I can solve that, okay, because I have a single trig value. It's even isolated. All I have to do is take the inverse or arc cosine of both sides to get x by itself. So here, my answer so far is that x is the inverse cosine of 1. Okay. Um, now, that cosine went away because I took the inverse cosine. Um, when we're at this point, we're asking what angle has a cosine equal to 1. So you can either look at your unit circle chart and find that, or actually your calculator will tell you um, it's 0. Okay. Well, that's how we want to take a look, and that's the only place. Okay, and that's the only value where it's equal to zero because notice um, the place we would land again it would be at um, 180, but the cosine is negative one there. So there's only one answer at zero. However, we do want to take into account if we are at zero and we go around the full circle in either direction um, and come back, the cosine will be one again, again, and again. So our answer is actually zero plus or minus 360k. It doesn't really make much sense to add zero, um, so just plus or minus 360k will do. All right, solve the trigonometric equation. So we have a single trigonometric function. We're good there. Um, I want to isolate it, though, so I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by 3. And that gives me cosine x is equal to 8 thirds. To remove a cosine, we do the inverse cosine of both sides. I'll write it out fully this time. And that can get confusing when things are assumed and steps are skipped. Okay, that gives me that x is the inverse cosine of 8 thirds. Well, 8 divided by 3 is 2.6. And if you try to do the inverse cosine of that on your calculator, you will get an error. And that is because cosine cannot be larger than 1. So this actually has no solution. All right, so here we go. Here's another. We have 5 sine x plus 3 cosine x equals 0. We want a single trig function, but there isn't an identity that does sine to cosine or cosine to sine. We have to have a squared for that to happen. So instead, what we're going to do, since it's equal to 0, um, if I subtract 3 cosine x from both sides, I get 5 sine x equals negative 3 cosine x. Okay, well, well, how does that help? Well, I know that sine over cosine is tangent. So if I can get somehow sine divided by cosine, I'll have tangent and I'll be in pretty good shape. Okay, well, if I divide by cosine here, we'll cancel. And whatever you do on one side, you have to do on the other. So I get 5 times sine x over cosine x is equal to negative 3. Right? Well, I still have this 5 hanging out here. Um, so 
sine x co over cosine x is tangent x. So now we have a single trig value. All we need to do is isolate it. It's times 5, so if I divide both sides by 5, that will give me that the tangent of x equals negative 3 fifths. I have to solve for x. I, good here. I've got tangent all by itself. I know that my answer is going to be wherever tangent is 3 fifths. That will be my answer for x. So I'm going to move up here a little. To remove a tangent, we do the inverse or arc tangent of both sides. Removes my tangent there. And the inverse tangent, you'll have to, this is not one of our exact values, so you will have to use a calculator to find it. And we get negative 30.9. I'm going to round to the nearest degree, so negative 31 degrees is my answer for x. Now for tangent, remember we always have to check for another answer. So tangent is negative <clears throat> here, and it's also negative in this quadrant. It's positive in first and third. But notice for tangent, it's really nice because it repeats every 180. They actually repeat. So for tangent, I can just take my one answer I was given and put plus or minus 180k. Sine and cosine don't work that nicely, but tangent does. All right, here is our last example. Now this one looks a little scary because not only does it have squares, it also has a 3x instead of just an x. But that's okay, we can work around that. Now, as long as they're both the same, notice they're both sine 3x, and this is sine squared 3x. So again, what we're going to have to do here is factor, since we had a sine squared and a sine. If you can factor just from here, that's great. If you need to substitute and say, let sine 3x be u, for example, and rewrite this as sine 3x squared, so u squared plus 4 sine 3x, 4u plus 3, and factor it this way first, you can. Um, we'll do it both ways. Okay, so if we wanted to factor this, we need factors of 3 that add to be 4. Well, 1 times 3 is 3, and 1 plus 3 is 4. So this one factors really easily as just 1 plus 3, excuse me, u plus 1 and u plus 3. Okay, I would then solve this, and to solve, remember we set each factor equal to 0, and solve each one for our two answers. So I'd subtract 1 from both sides, and I get u is negative 1. Subtract 3 from both sides for this one, and I get u is negative 3. Now that I know what u is, I can bring my sine 3x back and say, well, u was supposed to be sine 3x. So I have two answers, sine 3x is negative 1, and sine 3x is negative 3. Okay. From there, I do the inverse sine of both sides to remove that sine. Okay. So let's go one equation at a time. So the inverse sine here, and I have to do the inverse side on the other side, and I get 3x equals the inverse sine of negative 1. This is just a number here um, that's asking at what angle is sine negative 1. So if you look at your unit circle, that happens only at 270 degrees. Up here it's positive. Okay, so what that gives me is that 3x is 270 degrees. But we also want to get everything forever. <laughs> okay, so remember then if we go around the circle once, we land there again and the sine is negative 1 again. We go around the circle, we land again. So we want to go plus or minus 360k, where k is just any number of times around the circle. Okay, We're not done yet. We have to solve for x still, because this was 3x. So to do that, we divide by 3, divide by 3, divide by 3. And I get x is 270 divided by 3 is 90, plus or minus 360 divided by 3 is 120. Okay, so my answer is for 1 is 90 plus or minus 120k. Now, if you do this in your calculator and do the inverse sine of negative 1, it will give you negative 90 as an answer here. 
which is okay, but then you would just divide by 3 also, okay? So instead you would end up with x equals negative 30 plus or minus 120k. Those are really the same answer, and I would accept both, okay? Whichever you choose to put. But only put one of them. Don't put both, right? Um, we still have this one to solve for over here, right? So we do the inverse sine of both sides. And I get 3x is the inverse sine of negative 3. Unfortunately, or actually fortunately, sine can't be greater than 1 or less than negative 1. If you try to do the inverse sine of negative 3 in your calculator, you will get an error because it's undefined there. So we don't get any answers from this one. Okay. You could have done this without doing any u substitution if you're really good at keeping things straight in your head. Um, just when you factor it out, you'd have a sine x here, sine 3x here, and a sine 3x here. And you would go, okay, factors of 3 that add to be 4 are 1 and 3. And then again, you just set each of those equal to 0 and solve. So this is the other option. I know some people get messed up by the um, substituting way and do better this way. So whichever way works best for you is fine. So you notice we would get exactly the same thing either way. We get sine 3x equals negative 1 and sine 3x equals negative 3. Um, same answers. We would get the same answer here, either 90 plus or minus 120k or negative 30 plus or minus 120k, however you choose to write that. And this one here, again, when you do the inverse sine of both sides, would give you no solution. So you can solve it this way, or you can solve it this way, whichever you are most comfortable with.